From the laughable stats of Onix to the downright insulting learn set for Rhydon, most Pokemon in Gen 1 are awful. But as part of my project to make the perfect Pokemon Yellow ROM hack, today we'll be looking at how we fixed every Pokemon in Generation 1. Like the lone starter of Pokemon Yellow, Pikachu, who, without the ability to evolve, is in an awful spot in its title game. This Pikachu has no light ball or stat buffs of any kind, with really its only good move being Thunderbolt. Now, it would go against the entire purpose of Yellow if we changed it to be able to evolve. So the first set of buffs it will see to be made viable will be with stats. Look at these stats. I, I am seeing multiple 30s. Now to help this poor little mouse out, we've raised its HP from 35 to 60, defense from 30 to 50, and special from 40 to 70. And while these stats definitely don't give it late game material, the problem is that giving Pikachu further boosts, similar to the stats it had in say Let's Go, this simply makes it way too strong for the early game. So instead, we've made it so that the badge boosts provided by the Boulder, Thunder, Soul, and Volcano badge actually give Pikachu a 25% stat boost rather than the traditional 12 and a half. After beating Brock, Pikachu's 55 attack would normally become 62, but our changes effectively make it 69. Beating Surge gives it 63 defense, Sabrina yields a fantastic 113 speed, and Blaine sets its special to 80. Eight. Now, if this still isn't enough for Pikachu, given the way the code works, we can actually raise this to a 50% badge boost, but that starts to get a little dicey given the badge boost glitch in Gen 1. So it's a 25% boost for now, and we've also given Pikachu a mid-game move in Thunder Punch at level 20. Also, with Headbutt replacing Slam at 24, Pikachu can take advantage of Para Flinch. Overall, I do genuinely feel like this is the perfect spot for Pikachu. Given its frailness, its moves allow it to really punch above its weight class, and it provides what sometimes feels like genuine anime moments. And with Pikachu pushing Gen 1's original starters to Cerulean onwards, we've had to make some learn set changes to give them better niches. Squirtle is in the worst place by far, as losing its availability for Brock removes a big advantage it had over the other water types. Our goal with Blastoise was to give it the niche of being a diverse attacking water type that isn't a TM hawk. We've moved the normal Type Bite to level 15, giving it Body Slam at 27, and Ice Beam at 45, similar to Crystal Legacy. Whereas Venusaur has just had some level fixes and has been given Body Slam at 42. But relying on Ember until 46, the Charizard line was in need of help. Fire type is bad in Gen 1, and its early and mid game is notably awful, so to smooth things out, we've given Charmeleon Fire Punch at 19. Charizard will also get Wing Attack at 36, Flamethrower now at 42, and the Dragon type Slam at 40. Eight. Now, moving from the starters, given the ridiculously broken mechanics of Gen 1 sleep taking a turn to wake up before you can attack, most Pokemon are having their sleep move to the later side of their learn set. Butterfree's niche, however, will be that it's one of the two early sleepers learning sleep powder at just 15. And then to expand upon its confusion, we've also given it Psybeam at 24 and Psychic at 32. While Beedrill is getting more of a pure offensive buff with Pin Missile at 10, Focus Energy that actually works at 15, Twin Needle at 20. Swords Dance at 35, and Agility at 40. Weedle is returning to Viridian Forest in yellow, but make sure to subscribe to not miss our video that will list all encounters to allow for a 151 Pokedex. Now, without extreme speed, the Pidgey line can't quite shine like it did in Crystal Legacy, but making Gust Flying and turning Sky Attack into Flying Type Fire Blast does a lot for the line. However, with Gust becoming Flying Type, the Sparrow line actually lost its niche of having an early stab move. Its Drill Peck is solid, but given that Dodrio has better stats and learns it earlier, we've moved its drill pack to a very early 24. As for Rattata, it's actually pretty solid, so we've just given it Dig at 30 like in Crystal Legacy. To have Dig more widely distributed, we did have to set its base power to 70. And while nerfing Dig to then give it to a bunch more Pokemon is still a technical buff, Diglett is one Pokemon that loses out here since it always learned the move at level 19. To compensate for this Diglett specific nerf, we've raised its attack from 55 to 70, while Dugtrio is getting plus 10 up to 90. This will perfectly balance the through the mid game, but we're still monitoring how these changes affect its late game Earthquake and Slash. Whereas the Arbok line is now in a great spot, learning Substitute on Evolution. It's also benefiting from Glare having its accuracy raised to 90, plus Acid is now 65, while Sludge is 90 power. We really want our changes between Yellow and Crystal Legacy to feel similar, and so anywhere it made sense to, we've done similar changes. So Arbok has now been given plus 2 HP, 10 attack, and
intense speed. Now, given that Sand Slash is one of the weaker ground types, we've given it great early moves like Dig at 14, Slash at 22, and Earthquake at 30, plus it now gets Swords Dance at 42. And while the Nidoqueen Queen line has always been overshadowed by the King, we've given it Bite earlier to match the male line's early horn attack. Nidoqueen Queen will learn Body Slam at 25, Sludge at 32, and Earthquake at 40, whereas Nidoking King will see a similar set with Thrash replacing Body Slam at 25. Now, lastly, I didn't want to remove the early game power spike that these Pokemon provide, but I've done something interesting in giving the player another fun option. So now, if you're willing to sacrifice that early power spike, you can hold out the evolution to 24, where Nidorina and Nidorino will exclusively learn the move Dig. And also evolvable in Mount Moon, Clefable is a pretty good Pokemon, so it's just been given plus 10 special, and like many sleepers, has had its sing pushed back to 48. Jigglypuff, however, will be the game's only other early sleeper. Given that Clefable is so much better than Wigglytuff, this gives it a niche while plus 10 defense and special should further help. We've also given Wigglytuff Lovely Kiss at 38 to further play into its sleeper persona. And as a side note, you may have noticed that Sing isn't actually appearing in the learn set we're showing. The Gen 1 code is really broken, and there's actually two separate pages for a Pokemon's learn set and its actual starting moves. So all these Pokemon that you're seeing have the starting moves that you would expect. We just weren't able to pull it from the code because they're from two separate pages. Now, the Zubat line definitely struggles with Oak Crobat, but with 7 Gusts, 22 Wing Attack, 36 Sludge, and HM Fly, its great defensive typing will still serve a valuable niche. Now, in Crystal Legacy, we gave inspired but not identical stat boosts to Pokemon that got later Gen Evos. And we're actually doing a similar thing for Gen 1 Pokemon that got evolutions in Gen 2 and onward. And so taking inspiration, but not mirroring Crobat's high speed, in yellow, Golbat is going to see plus 10 speed. Now, the Oddish line was built in a way that it's literally Bellsprout and Bulbasaur, but worse in nearly every way. To compensate, we've put it in Viridian Forest and pushed it into the healing niche, giving it Leech Seed at 8, 30 power absorb right after Brock's level cap at 13, and 65 base power Mega Drain at 27. At 90 power, Petal Dance and Sludge now help its damage output a lot too. While the Bellsprout line is going to dive deeper into its offensive-oriented niche, learning the guaranteed crit Razor Leaf at 29. Now, Paris's one real claim to fame is Spore, the 100% accuracy sleep move now learned at 24. In Gen 1, Paris actually has three four times weaknesses, but with Slash and 65 Mega Drain, the broken mechanics of Gen 1 sleep do give it a respectable use case. Similar to the Venomoth line that has seen stat buffs of plus 10 attack, plus 10 speed, and 5 special. Venomoth has also been given Psybeam at 33, Psychic at 41, and Sludge at 46. Now with 70 power slash having auto crit mechanics, Persian is a Gen 1 Pokemon that always had a ton of potential, but was held back by not learning it until 51. We've pushed Slash to an early 34, which actually makes Persian kind of insane. And while it's also getting Hyper Beam at 50, its frailness will keep these power moves in check. And did you know the Psyduck line never learned a water move until level 52? Now located on Route 4, we've given it early Bubble Beam plus Psychic at 42 to help its offensive capabilities, which is something that Mankey now has a whole lot of. In Gen 1, the guaranteed crit attack, Karate Chop, was actually a normal move, meaning that Mankey could use it to land non-stab 100 base power attacks. But now with Fighting Stab, this base 75 move becomes 150 with a crit, and this gives the Mankey line the power it needs to not just be good in the early game. Primate now has the power to help it shine as the fastest fighting type whereas our changes to Poliwrath have just made it a solid mixed attacker. So we've added Poliwag to Old Rod encounters and actually put the Old Rod in Viridian City. With this, it's the earliest water type in the game. And then keeping in line with us wanting to keep Brock relatively difficult, we've balanced its level 10 bubble learn to only have 10 base power so that it doesn't one-shot it. Like Oddish, it then gets Water Gun right after Brock's level cap at 13 to come fully online. And then for later game, with Ice Punch at 30, Karate Chop at 25, Body Slam at 35, and Hypnosis is at 43, I think Poliwrath is going to be a really strong option. And just like in Crystal Legacy, Machamp will evolve at 38 and is the strongest of the fighting types. The most important thing this line gets is the now 100% accurate submission at 28. To keep its power going, we've also given it Karate Chop at 45, which given auto crit, is going to serve a similar function to Cross Chop in Gen 2. Next are Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan, who are two Pokemon that are incredibly difficult to balance while making sure they still feel like the Pokemon you're familiar with. 
Hitmonchan especially sucks, as its 35 special puts its elemental punches in the Weenie Hut Jr. of attackers. I wanted to see a world where Hitmonchan is actually good. We swapped its 105 attack over to special, giving it 50 attack and 10 HP. 105 special is a nice balance where its punches land pretty hard, but nothing oppressive. With 50 attack, Hitmonchan also makes solid use of its new learned karate chop as well. These changes make Hitmonchan feel like something that doesn't one-shot anything, but lays out reliable damage on pretty much every Pokemon. As for Hitmonlee, we've given it a much more balanced stat boost of 15 HP, 17 defense, 25 special, and 6 speed. Its 120 attack is great, but I just always felt like a hardened fighter would have better stats in all its other areas. Similar to the Pharaoh versus Dodrio situation, Hitmonlee is now going to serve as a better but later acquired version of Primate. Now moving on to Fire, this is a type that is notoriously awful in Gen 1. With its great special, Ninetales is actually pretty good in this generation, but we've given it Reflect at 25, a Flamethrower at 32, and Nightshade at 37. Also, given that the Trade Evolution Pokemon keep their learn sets on Evolution, it seemed unfair that the Stone Evos weren't given equal treatment. Along with every other Stone Evolution in the game, Ninetales will retain Vulpix's learn set. The same can be said for Arcanine, which is really its only major buff. Even with these fixes, Gen 1 Arcanine is still not in the best spot, so we've added the TM Dig. Now, as for the Ponyta line, we've tried our best to separate it from the previous two. Ponyta now gets Double Kick at 25 and Flamethrower at 33, while Fire Spin at 48 makes it the fastest trapper in the game. Fire type is about the stark opposite of Psychics, however, which really don't need anything. With its three level up Psychic moves, Alakazam is as expected amazing. But to balance for the lack of trade on Emulator, we've made it so just like in Crystal Legacy, it now evolves at 42. Next up is the Tentacruel line, which also doesn't need much help considering it's a massive 120 special it makes it the best Surf user in the game. The only changes this line is seeing is Boosted Sludge at 43 and Rap pushed to 47. As for Slowbro, this is another line that doesn't need much, but we've pushed Psychic from 55 to 45 and Amnesia from 44 to 40. We also gave it Waterfall and Psybeam, for mid-game variety. Gyarados is also really good, and despite not needing anything, we've given it the Dragon Move Slam as a nod to its future Twister learn. It will also again learn Gust and Fly via HM. Now there's this one little detail that I think a lot of players miss in Gen 1, and it's this little piece of design philosophy that holds a ton of Pokemon back. Outside of Yellow Pikachu learning Thunderbolt through level up, no Pokemon learns a TM move that is distributed by a gym leader. And given that Thunderbolt is really the only good electric move in Gen 1, this makes electric types really bad. I don't really think it does much for the game, so we're fixing this quirk and giving Magneton and Voltorb both Thunderbolt. Now, next is Farfetch'd, who is surprisingly strong in Gen 1 with access to Slash or Swords Dance. So we've basically just given it those tools early, plus 39 Drill Peck. But the best flying type in the game is Dodrill, who learns Drill Peck at level 30. Now, as an experiment, we've given it Jump Kick, but Rock and Ice coverage on top of this already cracked Pokemon may be too good. Also, given the massive buff Sky Attack is seen, the line no longer learns it. I mean, like, come on, really? Like, Dodrio? is gonna land a, a sky attack. Really? Now next up is Seal, whose only real sin was being an ice type that doesn't learn ice beam until 56. We've moved that to 40 and given it the now 85% accurate Blizzard at 50. Clisser was another offender of this, so it now learns ice beam at 40 and we've pushed Clamp to 35. Given that it's a signature move and Cloyster is slow, Clamp's early by yellow legacy standards shouldn't be too powerful here. And while we're covering the water ice types, the Lapras you get in Sylphco should now come at level 30. Sagan has been pushed to 46 to balance its otherwise incredible learn set. Seen very often in Sylphco, Muck is getting 20 in special, gets Sludge at 37, and will be the game's sole inheritor of level up Toxic. Weezing, on the other hand, gets Sludge at 33, and the Amazing Amnesia at 38. Now, unlike Johto, most Gen 1 Pokemon were given solid stats, but Onix is the one outlier here, so we've given it the largest stat boost in the game. Onix is getting its HP raised from 35 to 75, special from 30 to 65, speed from 90 to 100, and attack will move from a sad 45 up to 80. And rather than a Steelix-inspired boost, Onyx has been primarily buffed to serve as a better Gym 1 and E4 opponent. These buffs make it great in a playthrough too, though, as it's now a fast and strong user of Earthquake and Rock Slide, which it learns via level up. Krabby and Kingler haven't seen much, but we have made them an earlier encounter now on the Good Rod, which is acquired in Vermilion City. The Marowak line hasn't seen much either, outside of Bone Club getting improved accuracy. Mr. Mime has also just seen some set fixes. And similarly, all Hypno has been given is earlier Psychic, 
Psychic and level up Dream Eater at 45. Which is kind of crazy to think that the Dream Eater Pokemon didn't learn Dream Eater. But actually, speaking of Pokemon that didn't learn obvious moves, I am about to announce the most monumental change in this entire ROM hack. Prepare yourself, okay? Are, are, are you ready? I am proud to announce that in Yellow Legacy, Lickitung is going to learn the move Lick. Oh! On top of this paradigm shifting concept, Lickitung is also getting 10 HP, 15 attack, and 15 special. Next, Executor has seen some really fun changes, with Mega Drain getting 65 power, but we've also turned Egg Bomb into a grass move and buffed its accuracy. Since Executor doesn't learn Razor Leaf, this gives it a strong, stylish grass move that is still balanced. And as the only pure grass type, Tangela will make nice use of being the third earliest sleeper with 25 sleep powder and 48. Bind. While Rhyhorn is one of the saddest Pokemon in this game, with some of the best stats, yet no good level up moves. To fix this, we've given it the Crystal Legacy treatment, letting it learn Rock Throw, Dig, Rock Slide, and Earthquake. And Geodude has basically seen the same treatment. With great stats and a notable now 100% accuracy to Rock Throw, it can power through the mid game quite well, where it will evolve into Golem at 38. Now, it's been really fun looking through some of the oddities of Gen 1 stats. And one of the coolest things I never knew before I started of this project was how Seedra evolved in Gen 2. Because with the single special stat, Seedra really interestingly almost has the same stats as Kingdra in Gen 2. In Gen 2, it basically just lost out on the special split, and then Kingdra got back what it lost. Um, so Gen 1 Seedra is, is good. I just, I, I wanted to talk about this because I thought it was really cool. As for other water types, the Golden Line has seen pretty similar learn set buffs to that of Crystal Legacy. And as for the Staryu Line, we've made it so it actually learns psychic moves. Confusion to start, and Psychic at 40 is really all this thing needs to dominate. We've also tried to follow Crystal Legacy's bug philosophy, where we felt Yellow would feel most familiar if the pre-existing bug move Twin Needle simply became the late game bug move. So we've given the 80 base power Twin Needle both to Scyther and Pinsir, and they dominate with it. In an earlier build, Bug was in fact so strong that we actually had to remove its super effectiveness against Poison. Now, Electabuzz, Jinx, and Magmar were always three super strong Pokemon, and outside of slight learn set changes, we've basically just fixed them by adding them back to the game in their respective habitats. Now, as for Eevee, it's been given the TM Learn Dig, which helps Flareon big time, while all three Eeveelutions get their strong stab move at 36. Well, Flareon and Jolteon do, but since Vaporeons would technically be Surf, it makes more sense to give it Aurora Beam at 36 instead. Also, despite this being pretty irrelevant, we also gave it Bubble Beam at 27, since it is the Bubble Jet Pokemon. Now, Porygon is another Pokemon that didn't get good until it got an evolution in Gen 2. We've again buffed its stats in the image of Porygon 2 while not mirroring them. Now, as for other normal types, Chansey doesn't need anything. Kangaskhan just had its normal moves optimized, and the same can be said for both Tauros and Snorlax. Given that normal is good, and there's so many normal moves, this type in general just didn't really need much. Also, don't ask me about Ditto, because Ditto is bad, and it's meant to be bad, so we're not gonna make it good. Now, as for our fossils, Aerodactyl is going to be a pure menace, now that it gets Rock Slide at 40 and can learn both Earthquake and Sky Attack. Like, genuinely, again, this thing might be the strongest Pokemon in the game, and I am for it. Aerodactyl is just sick. Gen 1 and 2 Aerodactyl is so sick. It was held back by stats. It, it just deserves good moves. The other two fossils are also going to see some pretty standard fixes. Now, as for the game's lone Ghost-type Gengar, Gen 2 Pokemon saw Ghost perform great with the only good move for it being Shadow Ball. So despite many people wanting to add upwards of five moves for Ghost, that is ridiculous and the line just simply doesn't need it. All we've done to buff Ghost is make Nightshade an 80 base power move and made Ghost land special damage. Evolving at level 42, this is an absurd buff for Gengar, so just trust me, okay? You don't need to go crazy. Small changes are sometimes the most effective. And interestingly, the dragons of Gen 1 are in a very similar spot as Ghosts. People have taken a very odd hyper fixation with trying to make dragon type ridiculous. I've seen crazy suggestions like turn thrash into a dragon move, turn hyper beam into a dragon move. It's like, no. Here's the thing. Gen 1 dragon is not Gen 2 dragon. It's not Gen 3 dragon. It's not Gen 4 dragon. It, it It's very different. Game Freak's design philosophy for dragon was to make it extremely rare. Unless you go out of your way, you don't see dragon type until the second last fight in the game. And if Gen 2 dragon could do fine with one good dragon move, 
that's all Gen 1 needs as well. So given all that information, all we've done is make Slam an 80 base power, 100% accuracy dragon move, and of course given it to the Dragonite line. The beauty of Crystal Legacy was that we made the smallest possible changes where we could. And after spending way too much time on this topic, I really genuinely believe that this is what Dragon needs. Now, as for the legendary birds, they give massive evolution energy with their elemental typing and really awkward learn sets. Like, for example, because Fire Blast is Blaine's TM, and Flamethrower is just not an option because Game Freak wanted to make Fire Lovers suffer, Moltres's only fire move is Fire Spin. And so to fix all three, we've basically just given these birds the moves they want. Zapdos gets Thunderbolt and Thunder, Articuno gets Ice Beam and Blizzard, and Moltres gets Flamethrower and Fire Blast. And of course, since these are legendary birds, all three get Sky Attack. Now on the note of legendaries, since Mew gets every single TM, it won't see any changes from a buff perspective. We will, however, be discussing its in-game location in a future video, so make sure to subscribe for that. As for Mewtwo, this thing is so ridiculously strong that it too doesn't need anything. We will, however, be making some very slight changes to its storyline. YouTube's algorithm is now recommending you another video from our channel, so go click on that and I'll see you later. Peace.